thing, let's do the abdomen block first. So I'm kind of cut off the remainder of the diaphragm here. Unless there's anything unremarkable, you don't really need to document this. So you may be tempted to start here with your esophagus and your stomach that are kind of hanging off. But remember, you wanna find those adrenal glands. So always remember if you're doing the abdominal block to start with those and find those first. So looking here, we have like the very end of the diaphragm here. So you can kind of get that out of our way. So on the right side, you're gonna have your liver and on the left side, you're gonna have your spleen. So that can always kind of help you orient, especially once you start to like remove certain organs, it can get kind of tricky to orient things, especially when it's all um, fresh and bloody. So we're just kind of reflecting the diaphragm here. And then remember your adrenal glands are gonna sit superior to the kidneys, but also a little bit medial. So like I can feel it right here. So again, this is another great example of why feeling is so important for pathology. So fat and adrenal glands can look eerily similar. So if you're not palpating carefully and trying to feel for that adrenal, you may not be able to find it in the fat or you may accidentally cut through it and then that will mess up your weights and all of that. And so when you're looking in here, the best thing to do, honestly, in my opinion, is to just feel. And if you're finding that you're looking more than feeling, close your eyes. And that probably sounds crazy because there's sharp objects around, so obviously make sure all the sharps are out of the way. But if you're just feeling here, like I can feel the difference between this, which is your adrenal gland, and the rest of this, which is fat. And like, can you tell that from looking at it? No. So once you feel it, then you can kind of like peel off the fat around it, whether it's with your fingers or um, blunt scissors, whatever the case may be, and it's gonna come right out at you. So right there, like you can see it, see? Right there. So once you can see the outline of it, then you can kind of peel off or trim off the rest of this fat and the vessels. So this, is your adrenal right here. And what I'm, what I feel right here is also hard, but I know that that's one of the vessels. So remember, you're gonna have three adrenal arteries, a superior, middle, and inferior, and you're gonna have one adrenal vein. And so with those, like unless, again, there's something that you're suspicious of, you don't need to save the vessels. You can just kind of cut through them and remove just your adrenal. And pretty much all organs at autopsy are going to weigh. Um, so once you get it out, you're gonna make sure all your fat is kind of trimmed off because you don't wanna be weighing excess fat and then you'll be able to weigh it. Um, so here I can feel the outline and I can even kind of see the outline. So I'm just picking off the fat on the outer part. You could take blunt scissors and do that. Same thing down here. This is just excess fat. Now you don't wanna to get too crazy and try to peel off too much because then you might accidentally open it like I just did. Um, and these are pretty fragile, especially if the decedent has been, um, if they passed away a couple days ago. So like, that's what the inside looks like. But ideally you wanna get, it's just a vessel. Ideally you wanna get as minimal fat left on there as possible. And then you can get a weight on this. Now I will tell you when you're sitting this down, put it where you know what side is what, because once you have everything removed and no reference structures anymore, if you just have organs sitting out and you don't know what's right and what's left that can become problematic so with this i like to sit organs like if i'm looking at them as if they were on the block so when i do this i put it down on the right because if this was my organ block it would be sitting in me like this anyway so then with my right hand this is the right adrenal and it'll be sitting on my right other people do different things just whatever you're doing make sure you know what you're doing and keep it consistent so you don't ever confuse your sides and if there's like let's say there's a lot of people in the autopsy let's say it's a good teaching case just put it on a paper towel and write R on the paper towel. That way, like if somebody moves it or if multiple people are dissecting it, you, you just know what's going on, right? So weigh it, set it aside, and then once you get all your organs separated, you can section through it. So we'll kind of just sit that to the side there. So that was our right side. Now let's find our left side. So again, like it's literally like, <laughs> I was told that it's like magic when you're just palpating, palpating, and you feel it here, right? So like, I can feel the difference. Again, if you're looking at that, you probably don't see the adrenal gland. I can kind of see a little bit right there, but if you don't know what you're looking for, and especially if it's fresh, it's a lot more difficult to find. But I will tell you, like, I do the same thing on fresh cases, and it is still, I'm still able to find them just by palpating. So just look, or not look, just feel, and don't let your eyes trick you. You should be able to feel the adrenal gland 
and it should feel different than the surrounding fat, okay? So here it is. So again, you wanna kind of peel off some of that extra fat, make sure you're getting an accurate weight, and if you need measurements, you can get accurate measurements. And there's our adrenal. I mean, in, in reality, I'd probably clean this up a little bit more, but for our purposes, this is gonna be good. So again, sit it where you know what it is. So I'm gonna set this over here. This is gonna be my left. So we've got our adrenals. Now, in my opinion, the order doesn't really matter. You know, do whatever feels right. Do whatever is the easiest to get to at that point because each case is gonna be a little bit different. Maybe you have a huge liver that's kind of really in the way and so you wanna do that first. Whatever, as long as you find those adrenals first, I feel like that's the, a good first step. And then everything else, as long as you're doing the sectioning and the separation that you need to do, this part, the order doesn't necessarily matter, okay? So since we're here by the kidneys, I'm gonna go ahead and just do the kidneys. So with this, I like to take off the fat first before I cut the vessels, because again, it has something anchored to it. If you cut this first and then you're trying to peel it off, it can get really slippery, especially in a fresh body. So you can go ahead and just kind of peel off all of this fat. So this is your perinephric fat, kind of peeling that off you don't want to weigh it with all that fat attached right and then you know that we don't need this anymore so we'll go ahead and we'll trim off this excess fat okay so we have our kidney here obviously we're gonna to have to clean it up a little bit more but that at least gives you the general structure so that you can kind of see what you're working with and it gives you that anchor okay so go ahead and cut this so I guess what is this? We already cut our renal artery here, right? When we removed our aorta. So that's the renal artery cut. This is your renal vein. And then this is your inferior vena cava. So anytime you're cutting something, make sure you know what it is first. Because you may need to open this to look for certain things. And actually, really, you should always be opening this to look for any um, anything inside the vessel. So you can do it at this point, or you can do it once you get the kidney actually out and you're examining it. Okay, so this is our left kidney. So again, make sure you're keeping them um, so you know which side is which. Now you're gonna weigh this. So if you're about to weigh this, you should make sure that your fat's off and that your vessels are trimmed to the hilum. Same thing with your ureter. So when I do kidneys, maybe it's just because I'm an anatomy person, I don't know, but I like to leave it as intact and anatomical as I can. And then I will actually open it through the vessels, inspect the inside of the vessels, see if there's anything abnormal. I will also open up the ureter and then I will go ahead and bivalve it along the ureter because if you just try to cut this in half, you're not gonna get a good view of the calocele system. And like, what's the point of opening it if you're not getting a good view, right? If you're gonna do it, do it right. So. You can open up the vessels, open up through the ureter. Once you've inspected the inside before you wait, then you can kind of trim them at the hilum, okay? So I'm gonna actually just go ahead and do that because we're talking about it. Okay, so on here, we've got, we're gonna take off a little bit of extra fat and then we can inspect our vessels. So it doesn't have to be like a perfect clean hilum. Again, we're not in anatomy class, even though I am in the anatomy lab. <laughs> um, we're just gonna get it enough so that we can inspect it. Like you don't have to have this fat perfectly cleaned up to open up the vessels. So as much as I like want to clean that up just because I do, it'll make it look nicer, it's not necessary. So this is our renal vein, right? Thin wall, larger lumen, most anterior. So we'll go ahead and we'll open this up. Kind of holding, I was kind of holding that renal artery out of the way. Okay, so we look at the inside, we don't see anything abnormal. You can kind of peek in here, same thing, like nothing abnormal. The inside looks totally fine. You can do the same thing with the artery. And remember the kidneys are often gonna have accessory renal arteries and veins um, because of the way that they develop embryologically. Um, they start lower down in the pelvis and then they're gonna ascend. And as they do, they actually grow their own vessels, which I think is super cool because other things like let's say the testicles, for example, the testes will develop in the abdomen and then descend down, but they actually pull the vessels and the spermatic cord and all of that with it down. Whereas the kidneys, as they're going up, they actually grow their own new vessels. And so sometimes 
the old vessels like lower down won't degenerate fully and so that's when you'll be left with like accessory vessels there which I think is really cool so kind of opened it up here don't really see anything abnormal in here either and then lastly we'll go ahead and we'll open up our ureter typically the lumen of the ureter is going to be a lot smaller than the vessels so you may need to stick a small probe in there you may need to get some little scissors may not be able to get in there with these big guys. Okay, so we're getting there. There we go. These are a little bit too big for this. Um, but you can do it. So we're going to be opening up the ureter, examining the inner lining of it. It should be pretty smooth. to the renal pelvis. So see how much wider it is up here? You wanna open it all the way up to the level of the hilum, and then that way you'll get a nice cut when you bivalve it, okay? So now you should weigh it before you start cutting anything. So at this point, you can go ahead and trim off your vessels and any excess fat, and then you can go ahead and weigh it, okay? So to open it, to get a nice open cut, you should stick a probe in through that renal pelvis, like right where you had previously opened up that ureter, and stick it till you feel it like in a major or a minor calyx, preferably minor. And once you feel like you're in there, you can then cut along that and that will open it right along that calyceal system, okay? So this can be kind of tricky because especially at autopsy when you have fresh organs, you do not want to be holding things with your hands. So now you want to cut right along that probe, okay? So you should be cutting literally right on the probe. I can feel it. And look at that cut. So now you're inside the renal pelvis. You can see the calyceal system here. So this would be minor calyx, minor calyx, major calyx. Same thing over here. Um, minor minor, major, major. So if you want to, you can then go ahead and open up like the rest of this and inspect the full calyceal system. You can inspect the cortex and medulla, see if you see anything abnormal. Um, you can note, you know, the, the thickness of the cortex. You should probably take a nice picture of this. And then what you do with your kidneys, which breaks my heart as an anatomist, but after you get this nice bisection and you see everything you need to see, you're actually gonna section through it because this is not thoroughly sectioned enough. Right, so you need to look at as much surface area of these organs as you can because there could be a tumor or a cyst or something in here that you're not seeing because look how thick it is, right? So at this point, this is when I usually like to peel off the capsule. You can do it before you bivalve, you can do it after, it doesn't really matter. I personally think it's a little bit easier once you've already cut because you have a cut surface here and you have something to peel off. So this is the renal capsule, right? And you're gonna peel that off because you wanna note in your report whether it strips with ease or not. And you also wanna note what the actual outer surface looks like. So if it's hard to pull off, if it's hard to strip, that is probably indicative of um, hypertension or other issues. Same thing if you have like a granular surface, kind of like we're having here. Sometimes it's called like a flea bitten appearance. If it's a little bit like atrophic and kind of almost lobular and has these granular, um, has this granular appearance, that is more so indicative of um, hypertension. So the reason for that, I mean, if you've taken systemic pathology, um, highline arteriolosclerosis is gonna eventually give it that appearance. So you do the same thing on the other side. So again, like once you've already cut it, you have that nice area to cut and then you can kind of leave it attached. So that way, let's say you're doing this autopsy and somebody else comes or maybe the attending comes and you're doing like organ review and showing them what you found. You can show them, yes, here's the capsule, okay? So at this point, you then are going to have to section through your kidney to inspect fully. So with this, you should serially section, 
Okay, so you want to make nice cuts. Basically, I just go either superior to inferior, inferior to superior, whatever. Um, the point is just to get as much surface area as you can so that you can inspect it, okay? So now we can kind of flip through this and inspect each cut surface. And do we see anything abnormal? If so, we can note it, okay? So you can look at each surface. And if you see something abnormal and you need to finish that cut, you can always finish that cut. I just try to keep things intact, but also cut thoroughly. That way, if you're presenting the organs or if you need to, do, I don't know, take pictures or sections or whatever later, then you still have it intact. So once you've cut it, then you can sit it with your matching adrenal. And then you're gonna do the same, oops, you're gonna do the same thing with the other side. You should always use forceps, I'm being a bad example. So basically same thing over here, we're just cutting through it and cutting through that renal pelvis hurts me because I think kidneys are really pretty. They're one of my favorite organs. And so cutting through it all just upsets me, <laughs> but you got to because you got to see the cut surface, right? So same thing here, you're just gonna kind of flip through it, note anything abnormal. If you find anything abnormal, take a section, take a photo, um, take measurements if you need it, take everything that you need and then piece it back together as best you can, sit it to the side for review later. So then you're gonna do the exact same thing with the opposite kidney. So we just did our left, so now we're gonna do the same thing with our right. Make sure you know where your blade is at all times so that you are not accidentally going to graze it. So with this, again, I told you I like to start by peeling off the fat. That's what I'm doing here. Now, if you were doing that and the adrenal was in there, Yikes. So make sure if you're doing this that your adrenal is already dissected off. That's why we do that first. Okay, so this is all just fat. Okay. So now here's our kidney. And again, you just want to get those vessels and that urine are nice and clear so that we can cut them nicely. We don't want to just like hack everything out that is, in my opinion, a poor examination of organs and each of these cases you have to remember it is a patient and it is a patient probably with family and loved ones that are depending on you and this dissection to come up with a diagnosis to understand why their loved one died so it's not just cutting organs all right so here we have this is where we cut our, ren our renal artery right and we remove the aorta so that's what we're seeing here here we have our renal vein more anteriorly, and then we have our ureter down here. So we can go ahead and cut these. Here's the rest of the renal vein um, right here, because this is our inferior vena cava, right? So we can go ahead and cut that. And then we'll do the same thing on this one. So we'll actually go ahead and we'll open up the individual vessels, inspect those, and then we'll open up through the ureter, bivalve the kidney or bisect the kidney, and peel off our capsule and look at the cut surface. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing here. I'm opening up your renal artery right now and then the branches of the renal artery kind of splitting here, checking the inside, nothing abnormal. Do the same thing with the vein. And let's say there was, I don't know, a thrombus in a vessel or something like that. You'd want to take a photo, document it, um, and then take a section of it if you can, get a good section of it. So this is posterior, right? Because we're seeing the pelvis and the ureter. So our renal vein was most anterior, renal artery. This would be our ureter and our renal pelvis. So we'll go ahead and we'll open this one up to the level of the renal pelvis, just like we did the other one. So we inspect the inside of the ureter, nothing abnormal. So then don't forget to weigh it. So we'll trim off the excess vessels and that excess ureter. And then we'll go ahead and we will bisect it along the caliceal system. So again, stick your probe inside that ureter and that renal pelvis. Feel when it's lodged. And then you will cut right along this is probably not going to turn out very well. This is very slippery. So if something is slippery, 
You can always put a towel or a paper towel under it. If you're cutting on a cutting board, it can get really slippery really fast. So um, that is just a helpful tip. You can also hold it down with a paper towel. All right, let's see how it turns out. So here we've got on both sides, we've got our renal pelvis. We've got our minor and major calyces. Same thing over here, minor, minor, major, major pelvis. Okay, so you'd want to fully inspect this. Maybe, I don't know, take a picture if you need to, measure your cortex if you need to, note any abnormalities, um, and then don't forget to peel off your capsule. So you can go ahead and do that. And again, you wanna note whether it's um, easy or challenging to strip this and then note the external appearance. So this one also looks a little bit granular, which makes sense because these are from the same person, right? So then same thing, we're gonna essentially just cut, you know, superior to inferior to get as much cut surface as you can. So you would thoroughly and fully inspect this. Okay, and then put it with your matching adrenal. Same thing with the other half. So thoroughly inspect, good to go. Okay, so that was adrenals and kidneys. Now, what's next? Like I said, in my opinion, the order in the abdomen isn't really that important it just kind of depends on the case and the anatomy and what's going on so as long as you're doing everything you need to do it should be okay um, so at this point here we have a lot of tissue but not that many organs left so we can go ahead and clean it up so here this is still a posterior view right so this would be inferior vena cava liver diaphragm gallbladder and then over here we've got like remnant of diaphragm this would be esophagus and stomach and then here we've got pancreas and spleen so you can just start to kind of separate the organs out now if there's anything that you need to um, examine you should do so um, like inter-organ relationships patent vessels patent ducts things like that all of that you need to keep in mind a lot of that is going to be kind of institution dependent and also case dependent um, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the rest of this diaphragm here. Gosh, there's still so much on here. I'm missing a whole bunch here. This is usually a little bit easier to get off. I'm wondering if this is just because it's so fixed, but. So I just went around where the intervena cava passes through the diaphragm, and now I'm removing the very um, edge of that diaphragm over here. So I've just kind of gotten it out of the way. It's still attached a little bit. But here, basically my goal right here is to separate the liver and the IVC. That's what I'm working on. So at the hilum of the liver or the portohepatis, you should be able to find your artery, your duct, and your um, hepatic portal vein. And so depending on what's going on, like say they had, I don't know, a liver transplant or something, you may need to inspect this very, very thoroughly. You should always inspect it, but um, keep in mind there might be things like um, pathologies where you would need to do like a more thorough dissection here. So basically what I have going on right now is the intervena cave is reflected up. This, you're seeing the very edge, the pylorus here, duodenum. So this is like the head of the pancreas and then the uncinate process from the back right here. That's what we're seeing. So with that, you wanna kind of separate this as best you can. So this is kind of the remainder of that diaphragm. Oops. But again, you don't wanna just go like cutting things with it unless you know what they are. So no random cutting. You don't wanna accidentally cut into organs that you need to examine. So here, I know that this is just like a fold of peritoneum here, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. 
if I didn't know what that was, I would not have cut it. So this is kind of clearing our view up a little bit. So here, this is just a flap of peritoneum connecting your um, stomach and your spleen. So we can cut through that. And a lot of this may be hard to see on the camera, but again, it is literally all about feeling. You can feel that this is just a thin sheet of peritoneum. So you know that you can cut that. Okay, so now we've got our esophagus and our stomach are beginning to be almost freed up, right? And then it's gonna be pancreas, right? So what is this big vessel here? Remember, that's gonna be our superior mesenteric vessels. Those are gonna sit right here, kind of right behind the neck of the pancreas. So the head of the pancreas is more so like anterior here. This is where my thumb is in here. That's the neck, body, tail. So that's just remnant of the superior mesenteric vessels. So unless you have some reason that you need to keep those intact, you can kind of remove those um, and you should open them and look inside too, just in case. So the last couple branches here, we have um, the celiac trunk vessel. So remember your celiac trunk is gonna have that left gastric, um, common hepatic, and your splenic. So all of that was still kind of connected there. That's what I just detached there. So we're almost fully detached. So what is this big hunk here? Remember when we cut out the intestines, that's where we cut. So this is all still attached because we didn't really leave the mesentery attached to the intestines, right? So this is basically like the superior mesenteric vessels and then all of that attached mesentery. So we don't need that. You should probably section through it and note if there's any um, thrombi in any of the vessels, especially if you saw dusky areas of bowel, but otherwise you don't need this. So at this point, we're almost clear. And so depending on what you need to do and what you're looking for, you may need to keep this intact to do a dissection or you can go ahead and separate them. It just is gonna depend on the individual case. So with that, to kind of orient you, esophagus, stomach, pylorus, duodenum, where we tied off right in between where duodenum is changing to jejunum here, okay? Antonate process and head of pancreas, what's left of the mesenteric, the super mesenteric vessels, neck of pancreas, body of pancreas, tail of pancreas, spleen liver okay so with this you could if you were being lazy just take a scalpel and cut across there in my opinion you should actually dissect out the porta and know what you're cutting because again you want to make sure you know what you're cutting you don't want to just cut things to cut them and make it quick you want to actually know what you're cutting so you can just do some nice little blunt dissection here kind of open up this area and you should be able to find, if you remember the components of the port of hepatis, your hepatic portal vein, your proper hepatic artery, and your common bile duct. So remember the common bile duct is gonna come down like here. So you have your common hepatic duct, cystic duct, common bile duct. So you can kind of separate those out and then open it how you want. So everything is a little bit green and discolored, which again, in a fixed cadaver, that's not abnormal. So it's probably hard to tell just based on color what's what. So again, you gotta feel. So with this, this is coming from the gallbladder. So this has to be bile duct, right? So this is gonna be cystic duct, I can feel it right in there. And then once it joins with your common hepatic duct here, this is now your common bile duct, okay? Then you have your artery. So at this level, it looks like it's probably gonna be your proper hepatic artery already. You already gave off gastroduodenal. That's gonna be this guy. And then back behind that is gonna be your hepatic portal vein, which should be the biggest, not like the biggest, thickest, but the biggest, widest structure. So now that you've identified them, now you can feel comfortable cutting them. Especially like, say you have a filter in here and you're just like slicing across it with a scalpel, you could dislodge that, you could um, cut yourself. So just make sure you know what you're cutting. So I'm cutting across the hepatic portal vein here, cutting the rest of the 
back of the hepatic artery. And then with the bile duct, I'm gonna choose to leave the gallbladder attached. So I'm gonna just cut across the common bile duct there. And then this is just connective tissue. So we'll go ahead and cut that, okay? So now we have liver, gallbladder, and inferior vena cava. And then we have esophagus, stomach, duodenum, pancreas, spleen. So we have those separated, okay? So doing the liver, the liver you should clean up, examine the outside, um, and we will section into it, but you want to make sure you're weighing it first. Now, do you want to weigh it with the big inferior vena cava, cava attached? No. But again, like when I cut things open, I like them to still be attached to something so that you're not just like flailing around. Like if this, if I detach the IVC right now and then try to open it over here, there's nothing really like holding it. So I don't know, I just prefer to leave them attached until everything's open and clear. Plus then if you find something, you still have that relationship. So I don't know, I don't know if that's a personal preference or what, but basically I'm just opening up your inferior vena cava here. And then it wouldn't be full of like clotted blood like this. This is mainly because this is a fixed specimen. Um, this would either be full of like, you know, still liquid blood or would have already kind of been drained a good bit because you've already cut so much and dissected so much. So you can kind of open this up, see if you see anything abnormal. If there's a filter, you can note that. So this is now your iliac vein down here, common, and now I'm getting into external. So all of this, you can open it, inspect the inside, Note anything abnormal, nothing abnormal. Okay, so then you can trim it off because you don't wanna weigh the liver with the big IVC attached. So trim off your IVC. If you do see something abnormal, you wanna take a picture of it and probably a section of it, right? And wow, these scissors are getting pretty dull. the top of it here so this right here is where we cut it um, just above the diaphragm like right where it's entering the heart so I'm cutting off the vast majority of it here and I'm leaving just where the openings um, those hepatic veins are draining into it so like that's a little bit of the IVC left and then these are both hepatic veins that were draining into the inferior vena cava so those two openings that's what those are so now are we ready to weigh yet the answer is no, because you still have your gallbladder attached. So here, you want to detach your gallbladder. Now, I would recommend first clamping it. And really, I should have probably clamped it when I first cut that bile duct, but since this is fixed, I knew it wasn't going to, like, leak out all over me. But in reality, if that was a fresh specimen, I probably would have clamped it right before I cut. So here, I'm just going to clamp the bile duct where it's cut, and then we can remove the gallbladder. Now, sometimes... You can't get it off very nicely and you accidentally perf it here and bile goes everywhere. So my recommendation would be to do this over a container. You don't wanna necessarily do it right over the sink because say there's something in there that you want to examine. Well, if it's already gone down the sink, you can't really examine it. So if you're holding this over a container, that way, even if you accidentally perf it, it will all go into that container and you can still examine it. Plus, if you, let's say there were stones in there, you don't want stones going down the drain. Pretty sure um, that is not good for your drain. So you wanna basically just reflect it off the bed and then you will have it separated. So here's your gallbladder. So this surface that I had to like physically cut off here, that's adventitial surface. So like if you get a gallbladder or surgical specimen, um, let's say for cancer, that would be an important margin and important place to ink. So with this, you'll take it off and ideally you get it off intact like this. You still have to open it, but again, you should be opening it over a container. So I'm gonna grab a container and you can then unclamp it because you're gonna be opening it anyway, right? And 
and kind of just let the file out. Now, if this was fresh, this would be very um, less viscous. It would be um, kind of spilling all over the place typically. Now, it is going to depend. Sometimes you'll get like gallbladder sludge that is more um, thick and viscous, but oftentimes it's going to be a lot more runny. So you can kind of open it up, note the consistency of the bile, note if there's any stones, and then you should be inspecting the actual mucosal surface. So in this case, this one looks pretty normal. It looks like green, smooth, velvety. I don't see any polyps, I don't see any lesions, I don't see any like cholesterol deposits, any like yellow stippling. So this looks pretty good. Um, you would want to continue that cut up through the cystic duct, and that's kind of it for the gallbladder. Okay, then for your liver, your liver, we've already inspected the outside. We've looked at the portahepatitis. We've removed our gallbladder. We've removed our IVC and inspected the inside of that. So now you should weigh your liver. And then if there's anything abnormal on the outside, you would note that in your notes to put in your report. Um, you can open up the vessels and inspect those, note anything. Um, and then basically it'll just serially section or like bread loaf this. So with this, again, especially in a fresh body, this is going to be very slippery. So if you need to put a towel down or something or hold it down with a towel, then do so. Um, but essentially, you're just going to be cutting it. This is cutting really poorly because it's so fixed. But you're essentially just going to be cutting and examining the cut surface, just like we did with the kidneys. And you want to make sure that you're cutting it thin enough. Like I probably put those a little bit too thick thin enough that you're getting like a good representation of the cut surface, but you also don't need to feel like you need to cut it at, you know, 0.2 cm. So happy medium. I'd say like 0 0.4, 0 0.5 would be ideal. But I feel like also at autopsy, a lot of the times you'll cut things a little bit thicker than you would. Well, definitely you cut things a little bit thinner than thicker than you would at surge path. So basically you're looking at the cut surface. This does actually look a little bit congested. Um, now, since it's fixed, it's hard to tell like, is that part of the fixation or is that actual congestion? But it does have kind of a congested cut surface. Now, one of the tips that I have for people is don't forget about your caudate and your quadrate lobe. So here's your caudate lobe, here's your quadrate lobe. Oftentimes when you're cutting, you'll kind of skip those so that they stay intact, but you don't want to not look in there because I actually had a case a while back where there was a tumor in your little caudate lobe, and so if you don't cut into there, you might miss that. Um, that's more like a surge path tip, but it's also important for autopsy. You don't want to miss anything, even at autopsy. So I would do this with a scalpel normally, but all I have right now is this long blade. So ideally you'd do at least like two or three cuts through each of these little lobes. I'm only going to do two right there because this is a long blade and I don't want to cut myself. But ideally I would do that with a scalpel um, and then you can examine the cut surface of those as well. Okay, so then you're done with your liver. So of course you would take sections of it, but for now you can kind of just set it to the side. Um, the other thing that usually you should note in your report is the um, patency and the thickness of the bile duct. So depending on like how you cut it, you may examine that on this portion or you may examine that on the gallbladder, just kind of depending on how you like to dissect it. But that is something to note. So you should always probe pretty much every everything and just note if it is patent or not and also the um, diameter of the lumen. So now what we have left here, this would be like if it was in an anatomic position, we have esophagus, stomach, duodenum, pancreas, spleen, right? So here, what I always tell um, residents, PA students, everybody who's first learning this is take this opportunity to practice your Whipple sections because that Whipple section, the one like straight through the ampulla is really important and it's kind of a more challenging section to get. So while you have the opportunity, take it and do it. Um, so with this, basically you'll want to um, open up the esophagus and stomach and inspect the full inside. And then same thing with this part. So you can leave these attached, you can separate them, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna separate them just for kind of simplicity here. Okay. 
okay? So we'll do this one next. So first I'm gonna start with the stomach. Now, if this was an actual autopsy case, I would have clamped that and I would have clamped that because they're gonna be full and you don't want that kind of going everywhere. So right here, I've kind of cut through like the very edge of the pylorus. So that would be clamped, this would be clamped. Now, typically with this, I give the same advice as the um, gallbladder. You wanna do this over a container because there's gonna be a lot of fluid in there and you don't want it to go all over your table, but you also should inspect it and note what it looks like, if there's anything in it, things like that. And so you don't want it to just go down the drain either. So this, you should also do over a container like we did with the gallbladder. So with this, the esophagus, unless there's some sort of esophageal pathology that you're looking for in there, like say there was a tumor and I don't know, you'd wanna cut around that, but otherwise it doesn't really matter where you're cutting it as long as you're opening it and inspecting the full thing. So up here, remember that was like our pharynx, Here's the esophagus, so you're cutting along there. Now when you get to the stomach, at autopsy, I don't think it necessarily matters whether you're cutting along the lesser curvature or the greater curvature. I tell people to follow the greater curvature, just I don't know if that's like a personal preference of mine or what, but that's typically how you should do surge pass specimens. And so in my opinion, when you're doing an autopsy, it's, it can be really good practice for surge path. So I just tell people to go along the greater curvature to get, to get the practice. Um, Plus you want to keep it oriented because let's say you cut down the middle and then you find something in there you may not be able to properly describe where exactly you found it so i like to just go right along the greater curvature that way i know what i did it's very easy to orient etc and you should see that pretty sharp transition of mucosa from um stomach to esoph or from esophagus to stomach you should see that nice z line um, and some things you want to look out for in here, any um, varices that might have ruptured, any varices that didn't rupture, you'd still want to note any um, varus esophagus, any lesions, any polyps, any ulcers, anything along those lines. This is too hard with forceps. Um, anything along those lines you'd want to note. So basically here, again, I would have been doing this over a container to be a lot more liquid if it wasn't a fixed body. So basically here I've cut, this is your pharynx, I've cut open the esophagus, and then this is the inside of the stomach. So typically you'll have to you know, examine the contents and then you wanna rinse this out so you can cleanly and thoroughly inspect that mucosa. So I've just rinsed it out. And when you're rinsing it out, I'll warn you just to be gentle with the water because the water, if you put the pressure too high, it can disrupt the mucosa a little bit. So you wanna just be careful with that. But really this looks pretty normal. Um, I don't see anything abnormal. The GE junction isn't as obvious as I'd like it to be, but I think part of that is just because this is fixed. So everything is just more tan. But if this was fresh, this would be like white to pink. And this would be a little bit more like reddish. And so you'd see a pretty sharp transition here. And so if you see those like salmon tongues going upwards that is indicative of your buried esophagus remember so you'd want to definitely section and note that but otherwise this looks pretty normal so um sections are going to depend on your institution and whatnot but typically you'll submit a section of the ge junction and then the last part of the abdominal block here is this like whipple basically i mean we have the spleen and pancreas on here still too but we basically have the very end of the stomach, duodenum, pancreas. So um, with this, like I said, I like to tell people to practice with their Whipple technique. And so you can go ahead and open this, cut through our tie here. You wanna open it like along here, along the side, away from the pancreas. then you'd be able to find your um, ampulla vater and that major, the major duodenal papilla also called, and then probe that and then cut along that just like you would for a Whipple. Now, of course, there's a couple different ways to gross a Whipple and a lot of that is gonna depend on the pathology present, but that is one way that you can gross a Whipple. So, geez, this is super thick here.
right. So there's your pyloric sphincter. See how thick that is? That's the pyloric sphincter. There's the transition to duodenum. Boom, right there. So I'll, I'll rinse this out a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. And then we should be able to cut it open. So with this, with your pancreas and your spleen, you're essentially just going to serially section them, okay? So with that, you can just remove the spleen unless you're looking for something in the vessels, which in which case, like, remember your splenic vein is gonna be just kind of posterior to the pancreas and then your splenic artery is gonna be just superior to that. So unless you're looking for something particular or you're trying to do a specific dissection, typically you're gonna be okay just kind of cutting the splenic vessels here and removing the spleen. Then you will weigh the spleen serially section the spleen. So that can kind of be removed. And then with that, if you wanted to open up those splenic vessels, just to check, you know, should be thorough, you can actually now open up. This is your splenic artery because it's just a little bit um, superior and it's also got, you know, that curly Q shape, tortuous, and it's also got a little bit thicker wall. So you can see how tortuous it is. I love the splenic artery so much. So here you can see it like twisting around. So it's pretty cool. Um, open that up here. See what I mean? When you don't have anything anchored to it, it's so slippery and it can be hard to hold on to things. So since this is our last sectioning, there's not really much left to hold on to, which is why this one is a little bit more slippery and a little bit more tricky. But essentially you can kind of open this up all along the artery and just check for any thrombi or anything, especially dependent on the patient's history. Okay, so imagine that we followed that all the way up. I don't wanna make you watch that forever, but you could do the same with the splenic vein right here, okay? So the main thing I wanna show you is this Whipple section or this like opening here. So once you've got this all kind of cleaned out, you should be able to pretty easily find your major duodenal papilla. And honestly, I don't think that this is gonna section very well because it's so fixed. But if, if you can find that, that's your papilla, and you can stick your probe in there. And if you can get your probe in there and into the pancreas, then you can bivalve along there. Now, because this is fixed, again, I don't know how this is gonna turn out, but we will try. Um, we'll see how it goes. side but most of it seems like it's still on this side so a little bit off so if that happens you can literally just open it up along the duct so there's our duct so from this view we've got to kind of orient you we've got inside the duodenum we've got the ampulla of vater major duodenal papilla we've opened up that pancreatic duct We're nice and wide now but there's the other kind of like half of that so this and this would be an important section to submit and then the rest of it, you can see section. So you could add a couple cuts there if you want. Um, but essentially, you're going to just kind of section through the rest of the pancreas like this. Now, if you need to weigh the pancreas, different places will have different rules. I feel like most of the time, the pancreas is gonna be pretty autolyzed. And so the weight isn't gonna be that reflective or that helpful. Um, so some places won't weigh it, but if you do need to weigh it, you can always then trim it off of here after you get your practice with that section and um, weigh it separately. So kind of just depends. So here again, we have cut into our pancreas and you just want to thoroughly examine the cut surface just like we did with all the other organs. And note anything abnormal, submit any sections of anything abnormal. Here you can see that your um, Splenic artery here, you got your splenic vein, duct. There's your duct right there. So this is probably really hard to see on the video since everything is so tan. In a fresh specimen, it'd be a little bit more yellow, which makes it a little bit easier. But that's essentially opening that up. And there's a bunch of different ways to do like this specific part of the sectioning at autopsy. The main takeaway is that you want to make sure you're examining everything. So make sure no matter how you're doing it, you're opening the whole length of the bowel 
and you're opening up and sectioning through the pancreas thoroughly. Also make sure you're checking the lumen of the splenic vessels, okay? That's that part. Then lastly for our abdominal block, we took off that spleen and we already weighed it, right? So really all that's left to do is just serially section this. So you should have trimmed off all that fat and whatnot before you weigh it. And then you're just going to section it. So you would note anything abnormal on the outside if there is anything abnormal. And then basically just bread loaf this one as well. So something that's important for surge path specimens um, and kind of autopsy, not as pertinent for autopsy, but noting the integrity of the splenic capsule. So oftentimes, especially in trauma cases, if that splenic um, capsule ruptures, the patient can bleed out. So it's a very um, important thing to note in your dictation and it's a um, typically considered a medical emergency. So spleen rupture is no fun, no good. Um, but for autopsy, typically that's not gonna be an issue. Um, Forensic cases, yes, something you should know. So basically this looks like a fairly normal spleen. Um, it's typically gonna be like a reddish brown and then you'll see little dots of white. And this, since it's fixed, it's not as obvious, but this looks pretty normal to me. So you would, um, if you're doing the hospital autopsy, you'd probably submit an additional section of this as well, just to document it. So that is the abdominal block. So to review, we did our first step to separate our blocks was reflect the aorta up reflect the esophagus down, and then cut the two blocks apart by cutting through the inferior vena cava and then any other attachments, um, mainly like any attachments to that diaphragm, right? So then we separated them, we got our abdominal block. The first thing you wanna do on the abdominal block is find those adrenals. So the adrenals we did find, oops. So this would be right and left adrenals. Now I didn't cut these open for you, but after you weigh these, you're also gonna to wanna to cut open these just like you do with all the other organs. Like, are you seeing a theme? So when you cut the adrenals, oftentimes they're going to be pretty mushy. And so I wouldn't recommend using a long blade. Definitely use a scalpel for that. Um, but basically this is kind of what the inside of an adrenal should look like. The outer cortex part should be bright yellow and pretty solid. And then the inner part is gonna be the medulla. It's typically gonna be a little bit more like brownish. And especially in fixed bodies, it's going to be very mushy. So you definitely wanna weigh this before you section it but that's kind of what normal adrenal looks like. That was right, and then you would do the same thing with your left. This one still has a good bit of fat on it. You should really trim off as much as you can before you weigh them. So that's kind of, ooh, that's a pretty good cut surface for a fixed adrenal. So that yellow outer part is cortex, and then that middle part would be the medulla. So remember, the outer part is gonna be yellow because of those steroid hormones, right? And um, pretty much see it there. So we started with our adrenals, we found those, then we did our kidneys. And with our kidneys, we um, opened up the vessels and the ureter, we probed it through the ureter and into the calocele system. We bisected along there. We then peeled off our capsule, noted if those were difficult to strip or not, noted the external surface, describe and take any measurements you need of the internal, and then you serially section it to make sure you're thoroughly examining. You do that with both kidneys. Then, I, I mean, I think I did the liver next. Again, the order doesn't necessarily matter, but the liver, um, you wanna make sure you're opening up that whole inferior vena cava, kind of examining all of that. And then you want to examine the outer surface of the liver, make sure you're serially sectioning the whole thing or bread loafing it. And that was what we saw here, right? And this one, like I said, looked a little bit congested. And then we went through um, our, the rest of our like GI, tracked itself, so we opened up the esophagus and the stomach, examined that, we opened up our duodenum with the very end of the stomach here, we bivalved through that ampulla a little bit off, um, and then serially sectioned through the pancreas, examined that, and then we ended with serially sectioning our spleen. So pretty much everything should be weighed, um, and you note anything abnormal, and then your sections are gonna be institution dependent. So now we'll move on to the thoracic block.